Hello, I'm Tracy Grimshaw. Welcome to A Current Affair. We begin tonight with a love story, and they don't come more love-struck than Marshall Gould. He can't wait to marry his sweetheart as soon as she gets out of jail for trying to stab him to death. Belinda Van Crevel is accused of knifing Marshall Gould six times at their Rockdale unit last week. She's been refused bail. Belinda's the love of my life and you know, she's doing fantastic at the moment. You know, I, I love seeing her every single time and you know, it makes me happier every time I see her. Have you got anything to say to the public in Wollongong? It's a matter of looking in each other's eyes, you know, having a smile to each other and holding each other's hand. And, you know, very simple things but it makes you a lot happier at the end. Is love blind? Well, this may be the most bizarre love story you'll ever hear. Marshall here loves Belinda. She's the woman who tried to kill him. So she's inside prison doing time, and he's outside waiting to go in. He can't wait to see the love of his life. I'm deeper in love with her now than I've ever been. She's more in love with me than she's ever been, and even just the smallest things, like her smile, you know, the bat of an eyelid, and flick of the hair, uh, holding hands, laughing, all that sort of thing. And I just walk out the happiest man in the world. And, you know, I feel like I'm the luckiest man in the world as well. How could anyone be hopelessly in love with the person who stabbed them many times in a frenzied attack? That was last July. Marshall and Belinda had been together for over five years and they had a baby boy. Now, Marshall knew about Belinda's dark and deeply troubled past, but never expected she'd turn on him. I sort of turned, you know, to, to try and miss the, get the knife to miss me. And, you know, as I turned, you know, the first wound was straight into the back of the neck, you know, and then yeah. from there, I stumbled slightly, and that's when she got me in the leg. And then from there, you know, I, I went to grab her arm and she was stabbing again. And Belinda Van Krebel was high on a mix of bourbon and valium, but her aim was lethal. Wow. The last slash to Marshall's arm severed an artery. Yeah, well, apparently it could have killed me because uh, it clotted the artery, you know, when I tied the, uh, the shirt around it, and so that could have gone through and I could have lost my arm, or you know, the clot could have gone through to my heart and lost my life. After the attack, Belinda collapsed, and bizarrely, Marshall carried on as though nothing had happened. So then I laid down on the lounge to try and, you know, catch a bit of the football because it was origin night. But you didn't call an ambulance? No, I didn't. I knew that if I'd go to hospital that, you know, that the police would be involved and I didn't want police involved because I knew that eventually they would dig up the past and, you know, they put two and two together and... But the police was, did investigate no, after Marshall was forced to get hospital treatment. Belinda was charged, convicted and sentenced to three years jail. Her dark past Marshall had been anxious to keep buried was also out in the open again. Almost 15 hours after Jack Van Crevel was found hacked to death with a tomahawk in his home, police arrested 21-year-old Keith Schreiber at Albion Park train station. Back in after 2000, Belinda Van Crevel hired a boyfriend to murder her own father, Jack. Police say Van Crevel's daughter, Belinda, who also lived in the family home, found his body and reported the murder. She claimed in court that she'd been sexually abused by her father for many years and that those years of unrelenting abuse were her motive. Despite that, she was sentenced to six years jail. Valera gave himself up to police, insisting... Adding to the family's notoriety, Belinda's brother, Mark Valera, had just been jailed for life for other killings. The murder of former Wollongong mayor, Frank Arkell, and shopkeeper, David O'Hearn. He, too, claimed sexual abuse from their father as his motive. Belinda, have you got anything to say after no. your time inside? No, I don't. For her crime, Belinda Van Crevel picked up the nickname Van Evil. What do you want to do? I just want to get on with my life. But when she emerged in 2006, she seemed little the worse for wear. Do you anything to say to the public? It was shortly after this she met Marshall Gould, the lover she would try to stab to death and who is still besotted by her. I've never felt that it was actually her doing it to me. Uh, she was calling me her father's name when she did, Jack, that was her father. And she said, I'm going to kill you, Jack. And she just kept calling me Jack. And, you know, so at the end of the day, for me, 
it wasn't effective her doing it to me, she was doing it to her father. It's possibly that he is still with her because he feels an obligation to do the right thing. It's possibly that he's drawn to her because she is what we'd call the wounded duck and he feels drawn to help those in need. Marshall and Belinda's extraordinary love is fascinating to mental health specialists. Psychologist Pan Somers says that if Belinda is the wounded duck in their scenario, then Marshall may also be suffering an unusual kind of reversed battered wife syndrome. They tend to suffer guilt and they tend to think that they are the cause of this person's misbehaviour or some way contributed to it. Being Belinda's partner for six years... Does this explain his almost slavish dedication? He obviously has some disturbing issues there. Marshall never misses so any much. of the twice a week visits he's allowed. Hello, darling. I love you too. Yes, I miss you too. And then there are the many phone calls between them every day. And then on the weekend, I booked in for another visit, and that'll be in the morning at 8.15. I know it'll be great to cuddle you too. It makes me happy, it makes me stronger, and you know, it's my strength that she says has gotten her through this. And you know, a lot of people say I'm strong and you know courageous and inspiring and all these sort of things and at the end of the day that's humbling. Will you marry her? Oh absolutely I mean at the end of the day you know marriage to us is is a piece of paper we've already got each other's names on our marriage finger. In fact Marshall's body is now a decorated me, temple anyway, dedicated so. to his femme fatale Belinda. It's an obsessive love that calls into question his own state of mind. Love is strange and you certainly don't choose love. Um, loves a feeling that, that comes to you and... Some people would say you'd have to be a bit crazy to want to carry on this relationship, wouldn't they? Ninety percent of them say the same thing. They all turn around and from telling me to, to run away and, you know, that I'm nuts, you know, they, they turn around and say, well, at the end of the day, we wouldn't do it. But, you know, they're saying they don't have the strength and the courage to be able to go through it. He loves her. It's a very sad love story. I'm hoping that it turns out to be a very happy love story. Marshall's dad, Wayne, he's looking forward to Belinda's release and a wedding. Long time ago, I said to Belinda, I said, look, your father was an excuse my French. You don't have a father, you don't have a mother, and I will be proud to be your father, providing you get your act together. In jail, Belinda is getting professional rehabilitation for her drug and alcohol problems and counselling. She's reportedly working hard on that, but is it enough to ensure there won't be any more violent episodes? Aren't you at all concerned that if you two are living together when she's released, she might go you again? No, not at all. She'll do anything she can to make sure she's a better person and that part of her life's over. I'm proud of her. I'm very proud of what she's done to change, and she is a changed woman. End of the day, it's a car crash. It's, it's, there are many other variables out there that would lead to her re-offending, unfortunately, so you can't guarantee it. It's not a bulletproof guarantee, but we definitely can help. And rehabilitation does work. Knowing that, you know, what's on my arm, Belinda, together forever always, is exactly what it's going to be. Together forever always. Um, I don't have any doubts that that's what's going to happen. We do hope for the best for both of them. With good behaviour, Belinda could be out by the middle of next year.